This is Pastor Nathan Willard, Inca United Church of Christ. Sitting in the grass on this day in the sunlight. It's pretty late in the day, um, but it's Monday, and so that's what I'm doing right now. We're into a, a shorter passage again from 1 Peter. It's only seven or eight verses, and it's because it's a really important verse. This is the verse that you get quoted a lot at times when people really want you to do whatever it is that an authority figure says. Um, that whenever there's a, a moment where we say, no, we must just uh, do whatever it is uh, that is asked of us, uh, First Peter gets trotted out. Now, I'll talk about why, and I'll talk about why that's maybe not the best reading of the passage, although it, it's definitely there. So just to remind you, we've got this story where it, it, the author of 1 Peter is writing into some churches. It's probably not um, the uh, person we think of, of Kephas, Peter, um, uh, of uh, the first pope. Um, and there's some kind of oppression um, that he is uh, writing into, and maybe uh, a temptation to disruption. So we'll get into 2.11. Uh, Dear friends, since you are immigrants and strangers in the world, I urge that you avoid worldly desires that wage war against your lives. Live honorably among the unbelievers. Today they defame you as if you were doing evil. But in the day when God visits to judge, they will glorify him because they've absorbed, observed your honorable deeds. So here we get the story of his audience saying that as Christians, you're sort of sitting outside, not necessarily legally, you're not legal aliens, but you, you are apart from uh, the people you are in. And this is something you see in the Old Testament with um, uh, the Jews in Egypt and other places where they're aliens in a foreign land. And it's, a, it's a, basically a metaphor in this place that you are uh, these aliens. And then he gets into this argument, you should do things nicely. And in the end, uh, everyone will respect you. The people who have been oppressing you um, will uh, observe you. Uh, and uh, know that you were doing well uh, and observe your honorable deeds, which is a message we get um, in America, right, at various points, a non-violent movement saying, hey, if only we show them our conviction and we show them our willingness to obey um, laws, then they will eventually be convinced by us. 13, for the sake of the Lord, submit to every human being, possibly institution, maybe being, uh, do this whether it means submitting to the emperor as supreme ruler or to governors as those sent by the emperor. They are sent to punish those doing evil and to praise those doing good. That last part is just a classic rhetorical uh, statement about, uh, uh, about the emperor and laws. Uh, submit to them because it's God's will that by doing good you will silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Do this as God's slaves and yet also as free people, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Honor everyone. Love the, em the family of believers. Have respectful fear of God. Honor the emperor. Okay, so there are a couple of things going on here that aren't immediately obvious. The first is when we talk about every human institution, we can't remember the cult of the emperor where there's this idea that the emperor is God. And so by calling the emperor human, that is a way of saying, hey, look, the emperor is not God. So it's a little bit um, undermining this argument that the emperor is making. Um, but further on this, we get the message, look, if you go against the emperor, if you get, go against the law in Rome, they're going to kill you, just like they killed Jesus, and the entire movement will be uh, will die out, and people will forget who you were, and that's the mess that is coming on right now. And so the argument here is say, do follow the laws. Don't think you are exempt from the laws because you're a Christian and an alien, um, but do follow them. Um, but then there's this little codicil of don't do evil, right? Don't use following the law as an excuse to do evil, that yes, you are under human authority, but in the sense that uh, the human authority is there to uh, combat evil, you can't use that as an excuse to go against the things uh, that you would have done, right? And, and so it, it's a uh, note there that reminds us there are limits to the authority of the emperor. The emperor is not God. The emperor is God. And that even though we must live in society, even if we're not of society, and this was a time when there were many fewer Christians than there are now, um, it is not an excuse to do evil just in the name of authority. And that's the thing that we have to get here, that even in this letter, as it says, follow the authority, it is undermining the premise of some of that authority that the emperor is God. Here they're saying you can follow the emperor and not think the emperor is God. It's not a blind um, uh, message. It's a message to blindly follow authority, as it's so often used. Um, it's there and it's important for salvation. We'll get into tomorrow um, what that means, but here we also note that a lot of the payoff is to come on the final day of judgment. And that's because Peter thinks, or whoever's writing this, thinks it's going to come soon. So what do we do with the idea that there will only be reconciliation at the end of time 
if we know that end of time is not imminent? Does that change our thinking at all? We'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, it is Monday, June 1st. 1 Peter 2, uh, 11 through 17. Thank you, United Church of Christ.